This is a video explaining the basics of solving equations using inverse operations for the math GED. When it comes to solving equations and formulas on the math GED, you need to have a process that you can use to isolate the desired variable. In other words, you're solving for the unknown. So if you look over here in red, you have the variable or the unknown, which in this example, 3f equals 9, f is the variable or the unknown, and over here it's x. And so we want to figure out what x is so that this statement is true, that when 4 times the unknown, um, minus 2 equals 10. And we'll use inverse or opposite operations. So if the operation is addition, the opposite of that is uh, subtraction. Subtraction, the opposite of subtraction is addition. And then the same for multiplication and division. They undo each other, or they're the inverse or the opposite of. So I like to teach students that imagine the variables this thing, and then there's things happening to this variable. And how do we undo what is happening to that variable so that we can get it all by itself? So if you have the two-step equation, 3x minus 5 equals 4, I have students think about what's happening to the x here. And if you think about, well, is anything being added or taken away? And the answer is, you know, we're taking 5 away. We have a minus 5 here. So we're going to do the opposite of that, which is to add 5. Um, then the next step is think about, is, or is, it, is the unknown being divided or multiplied by anything? And this right here does, in fact, represent 3 times x. So the opposite of that is to divide by 3 in order to isolate that variable. So we're going to do the opposite of what's happening. Let's start with some one-step equations. And again, I like to to you know, focus this attention on what's happening in the opposite. So sometimes I'll just abbreviate um, H and O, and um, I'll go through this process here. Now, I know when it comes to one-step equations, many students can just look at this, and they can just quickly determine the answer. That's you know using logic, which is great. Uh, I'm going to teach the process here because on the GED, eventually the problems get more difficult and you do need to have a process. And so um, this is the basics. So we're just going to start here with the basics. So if we focus here on H, what's happening to H? Well, we're adding 5 to it. So we have a plus 5. So to solve this problem, we're going to do the opposite, which is subtracting 5. So we also have sides of the equation here at the equal sign. And so we're going to subtract 5 here because we're adding a positive 5 here. And what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do to the other side. So plus 5 minus 5, those become 0 or cancel out. H drops down. 13 minus 5 is 8. And that is our answer. Let's do this one over here. I minus 13 equals 32. So what's happening to I? Well, we are subtracting 13 from it. So the opposite is to add 13. So again, let's create our sides of the equation at the equal sign, plus 13 here. And again, what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So uh, minus 13 plus 13 is 0. We're left with i on the left, which is what we want. And now it's 32 plus 13. 2 and 3 is 5, and 3 and 1 is 4. So our answer is 45. Now, down here, r over 8. So many students see this as a fraction. It is a fraction, of course. But think of it as division. If you think of fractions as division, they immediately become easier to handle, easier to understand. So don't see this as a fraction. See it as division. So what's happening to r is it's being divided by 8. So the opposite of that is to multiply by 8. So we're going to do that here. I'm going to multiply this by 8. And what I do to one side of the equation, I'm going to have to do to the other. Notice I put the 8 up here on level with the, with the R. That's because this is kind of like 8 over 1. 8 over 1 is 8. And when we do that, these cancel out because it's like it becomes 8 over 8, which is equal to 1. We don't normally write 1R. We just normally write R. So that's what we're going to do. But this is effectively 1R um, is now equal to 6 times 8, which is 48. 
eight. So again, you'll see me putting when anytime you using inverse operations, I will put whatever we're multiplying uh, up on level with the variable to um, to just accurately show what's actually going on. But I'm not going to re-explain this again. So if you look at this over here, now this represents multiplication. This is seven times t. So what's happening here is you're multiplying t by 7. So the opposite or the inverse of that is to divide by 7. And so how I normally do this, again, is I set up a fraction. Again, fractions represent division. I get many students that like to do this, do it like this, which is totally okay as long as you know what you're doing, uh, that you're just dividing here. So 7 over 7, again, that represents 1. We're just going to write t. And again here, we divided these here. How many times does 7 go into 42? Put it in the calculator. I always tell my students, no shame in using the calculator on the GED. Um, use it a lot. Use it frequently, and it will help you. So the answer is 6. All right, so I just kind of dived in without giving you the steps for solving equations. These are the four general steps. So the first one is distribute across parentheses. So I always give you, if you're taking notes, I just do shorthand parentheses first. Then you're going to combine terms. So if you have terms that are the same on both sides, or on one side of the equation rather, you can add them or subtract them. You can combine them, however you would do that with the operation. Then you're going to add or subtract to undo um, addition or subtraction. Okay, um, actually, may, I think I said the backwards. You're going to add or subtract to undo subtraction or addition. And likewise with multiplication and uh, division. You will do whatever it takes to undo what's there. So this is in general. There are exceptions to this, um, but this is the general process, okay? So let's do some two-step equations. Again, focusing on the happen, ha what's happening to the variable and then doing the opposite. If you want to abbreviate H and O and create your T-chart, that can be helpful, save you a little bit of time. So if we look here at E, again, you want to focus on there's no parentheses, there's nothing to combine. So look for addition and subtraction first. So what's happening here to E is we're adding 3. The opposite of that is to subtract 3. Then this is E being divided by 4. It's not a fraction. Well, it is a fraction, of course, but think of it as division. So if we are dividing e by 4, the opposite or inverse of that is to multiply by 4. So here's step 1, and here's step 2. All right, so let's create our sides of the equation. Here's minus 3, minus 3. Plus 3, minus 3 becomes 0, and we're left with e divided by 4 on the left, and then 6 minus 3, which is 3. Again, this is e being divided by 4, so we're on to step 2, so we're going to multiply each side by 4. These cancel out or become 1, and e is equal to 3 times 4, which is 12. All right, what about 3x minus 4 equals 14? Again, focus on subtraction and addition first, so we are subtracting 4. The opposite of that is to add 4. Then you have, you're multiplying by 3. So the opposite or inverse of that is to divide by 3. So create your sides of the equation. You're going to add 4 here, add 4 here, and this is going to give us 18. This is 0. So now we have 3x equals 18. So now down to step 2. We're going to divide by 3. Set it up um, as a fraction here. And same over here represents division. How many times does 3 go into 18? The answer is 6. Okay, here um, is another example. 6 plus u divided by 5 equals 10. So what's happening here is we are adding 6 to u. So we're going to subtract 6 on both sides of the equation to help us solve this. And then this is u being divided by 5. So let's multiply by 5. Again, this will be step one, and this will be step two. So let's subtract six here. This is kind of tricky because most students, they don't notice that this is a positive. You've got the positive here, but um, this is why we're subtracting six. Okay, so these cancel out. You have u divided by five, 
equals 10 minus 6, which is 4. U divided by 5, the opposite of that is to multiply by 5. Again, on both sides of the equation, these cancel out or become 1. And so we just write U instead of 1U. And 4 times 5 is 20. Again, no shame. Put that in the calculator if you need to. Um, don't don't guess. Don't don't stress. Uh, no shaming. If you need to use the calculator on the GED, remember you can use the calculator for the majority of the questions. I'm always telling my students, please use the calculator more. All right. So now we have this problem here: negative six plus three. Sorry, plus three times c equals six. So this one I find is, is tricky for students because when you think about what's happening to it, we are adding a negative. So here we're adding a negative 6 to this 3c. So if you add a negative, again, that's the same as subtracting 6. Okay, so the opposite is we're going to actually add 6 to both sides. This 3 times c, that represents um, multiplying by 3. So we're going to divide by 3. All right, so let's add 6 here, and we're going to add 6 over here to our, you know, sides of the equation. These cancel out or become 0. Now we're left with 3c on the left side of the equation, which is equal to 12. So this is 3 being multiplied by c, so we're going to divide by 3 um, to get our answer. 3 over 3 is 1. Again, we don't normally write 1c. We would just put c. And how many times does 3 go into 12? Again, put it in the calculator if you need to. 3, or sorry, 12 divided by 3 is 4. Okay? So, those are basic two steps equations. I did want to create an example where we use all four steps. So here I've got 3 times x minus 4 in parentheses plus 2x equals 27. So if we distribute across step 1, we're going to multiply this 3 times x and this 3 times what effectively becomes a negative 4. So 3 times x is 3x. And then 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then we'll drop down this plus 2x and set that equal to 27. So that's step 1. We've gotten rid. We've distributed across the parentheses. Now let's combine like terms. We can combine this 2x and this 3, and the, uh, 3x and the 2x to get 5x minus 12, again, is equal to 27. So now... <clears throat> now you can do what's happening in the opposite. What's happening is we're subtracting 12. We want to add 12 to both sides. So we're going to add 12 here and add 12 here. This is going to give us 9, 39. Um, and we've got 5x over here is equal to 39. Let's divide by 5 on both sides. That would be the last step. So again, what's happening here is you're multiplying by 5. So the opposite is to divide by 5. All right, so we end up with x equals 5 into 39. Let's put that in the calculator. It seems like it's kind of a weird one. Sure enough, we get a decimal. It's 7.8. All right, I always like to give you examples where you can really practice this. So these are Khan um, Academy exercises. So if you want, you can type in one-step addition and subtraction equations where it just focuses on the uh, addition and subtraction. Then he also has one for multiplication and division. And there is a good two-step one as well. It does involve parentheses, um, but if you type in two-step equations, search for it, or look below. I will link this. It's also linked to my website, pastthegd.org. And good luck on the GED. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable, and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to pastthegd.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.